Welcome to the Investor Empowerment Series radio show, empowering your real estate investing with techniques, opportunities, and information, minus the BS and sales pitches. Now, please welcome the host of the Investor Empowerment Series, Joe Mueller from the Tough as Nails Investment Syndicate, Joe Mueller. Hey investors, I wanted to give a quick insider opportunity to the listeners out there who are currently doing deals or just getting started and looking to create more financial efficiencies for the real estate business. Introducing Investors Title Services, a much lower cost option for procuring the necessary title insurance policies for your real estate transactions. Think about how much money you've spent on title insurance in the past on either your current purchases or sales, and think about how much you'd be savings if just a couple hundred dollars per transaction ended up back in your pocket. Well, now you can by optimizing the relationships that other investors have established that you currently need for your business. That's what we do here at Investors Title Services. If you're a fix and flipper, a wholesaler, or, or a buy and hold landlord, we specifically serve this small niche offering you the best deal on title policy insurance. Call 847-443-9676 today to learn more about how you can save hundreds of dollars, if not more, on your next title insurance policy. Welcome back to the Investor Empowerment Series radio show. Not even sure what episode this is. Doesn't matter. This is Joe Mueller from Tannis Group and Investor Title Services uh, coming to you today for another five-minute Friday. I just want to do a quick segment on what us in the investor world like to call the KISS method, the keep it simple, stupid method. I know that sounds kind of degrading, but it's actually to your benefit, and here's why. A lot of investors, when they get started in real estate investing or even in business in general, and JJ, you know who you are. I'm not referring to you specifically, but this is a great case study to talk about. You think about the future before you even get your feet wet. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're jumping in and you want to get your real estate investing business started. And I think it's great that you're preparing in advance to buy your first rental property or to complete your first flip. We've always talked about building your team and getting the right people in place. So when you're ready or when that opportunity comes knocking, you can jump through that door and take advantage of it. I completely agree with that theory and still would uh, recommend that today. That said, uh, I had a little experience myself about bookkeeping, specifically uh, working with the right people. And when I set up my investment business years ago, you don't really necessarily know what the end goal is going to be 100%, right? Everyone, everyone creates goals or writes down their goals, which we also recommend. And sometimes things take a different turn or things move faster or more profitably than you expected or, in some cases, less profitably than you expected. And then goals can change. I think it's important to reevaluate them. Now, that said, uh, in my experience, um, you can put all the right types of systems in place, and I'm referring to bookkeeping specifically in my situation that I'm going to describe today, but I'm talking about Anything you're doing, whether it be marketing for properties or checking your email at a certain time per day if you have a day job and reviewing properties or when you're seeing properties, even down to your little toolkit that you might bring with you when you go check out properties that includes a flashlight and a camera and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Think about when you're setting your goals, when you're just getting started, keeping it simple because as you expand as your responsibilities grow, or let's say as your business grows and your responsibilities um, move up the ladder to a point where maybe you are working in more of an oversight position and delegating a lot of that stuff out, whether it's staff or to a management company, your systems that you create in the beginning most likely are going to be what you end up sticking to throughout the duration of your business unless you specifically have a dire need to make a change. And I'm referring to QuickBooks in this case. Uh, QuickBooks, 
There's classes out there you can take online. QuickBooks offers classes online. Uh, there's, there's classes in general you can take at local community colleges to help understand QuickBooks. In my opinion, unless you're going to be the guy managing QuickBooks or the gal for the duration of your business, I wouldn't even get into it. I would keep it simple in the beginning. I would keep track of everything. One of the, mo- one of the more successful investors that I know that is at one point owned over 100 houses and I now, th- I th- now I think has about 50 to 60 properties under his belt does everything with a pencil and paper and like a ledger book that he buys at Office Depot every year. Uh, I know that sounds slow and like that could that, that, that inefficient, but he has a very accurate tally of exactly what's going on with his properties at any given time. And I'm not saying that you can't do that with QuickBooks. What I'm telling you is if you only have one rental property or maybe even three or four, uh, diving into a, to an expensive software platform in order to manage, track everything that goes on with your rental properties, you know, cut checks, take deposits online. I mean, there's all types of things that QuickBooks can do. You can get there someday. Work your way towards it. Because unless you're a QuickBooks or, uh, you know, some type, you know, Quicken or, you know, Microsoft Money, all these other options out there that you can use for accounting, unless you're a whiz at it, which I know a lot of you are, that's great. If you are, go for it, man. Do it. But if, you're, if it's not really your thing and you don't plan on being the guy working behind the desk, uh, tallying up every number and exporting the correct reports and operating statements yourself, then keep it simple to something that you can manage on your own, something that you can manage until the point that you actually need that additional service or, or that expanded service that needs to be turned over to your accountant at the end of the year or if you're going to be you know, running your numbers on a flip that you just completed and you want to see how much money you made, I mean, the last thing you want to do is dig around in QuickBooks or some type of software program for 30 minutes trying to figure it out. I mean, some of the simplest stuff can come out of an Excel spreadsheet where you're literally just typing stuff in and putting a notation next to it. You know, painter, $2,000, drywall guy, $1,000, et cetera, et cetera. And the only reason I advise this is in my situation, we have properties under management for other investors. We've got properties that my company owns. So we have a sizable portfolio that we're working on. And not only is QuickBooks part of our baseline, which you know we're very happy with, the problem is as you change service providers, they may or may not be qualified enough to understand that transition. And when I say that, what I'm referring to specifically is let's say you switch from an accountant that you've had for a couple of years and you find a better one or somebody else recommends one to you and you're like, yeah, I love this new accountant. I want to totally use him. Well, unless you have a handle on how to operate QuickBooks, and let me give a little disclosure here, haven't touched QuickBooks in 10 years. You know, I've got a bookkeeper in my office that handles it and then the accountant uh, that I have on, you know, that my uh, subcontracted accountant works on QuickBooks. Um, Unless you have a great handle on how that program works, there could be some stuff that you miss even during some oversight when you're trying to figure out what's going on because you just don't understand the updates, the changes, the improvements to the software, the way to operate it correctly. That can be, that can be detrimental to your business. Uh, there may be expenses that are getting miscategorized, and I'm not saying that it ain't, it ain't the fault of everyone involved, bookkeepers and all that stuff, but how are you going to catch that? How are you going to figure out if something isn't correct when you've, got, when you've delegated responsibility to your accountant or to a bookkeeper or whoever that is working for your business if you don't understand how to actually work the software, the program, the system that you put in place? I think it's incredibly important when investors get started, they keep it simple, keep it simple stupid, because you can always grow something and improve upon it. But when you start off at the top or you have grand aspirations that, you know, you're going to spend $500 on a piece of software that's going to make you lots of money someday or help you track it, that that can very quickly get lost in the mix because you're no longer necessarily paying attention to that. You're focusing on your business, which is working on your business, improving it, whether it be finding more properties, doing more wholesale deals, fixing and flipping, renting more, whatever it is that you particularly do on your day-to-day. Maybe it's nothing, and that's awesome too. But at the very minimum, I'd hope you'd be looking at monthly reports of what your income and expenses of your business are. But if you don't know how to go in there yourself and work that end of it, you could end up with a problem. So quick five-minute Friday from me. Uh, Keep it simple. Again, for those of you listening that maybe don't have any properties, 
of course, build your team. Of course, get the right players in place to make sure they can help you grow your business. But no need to get in so deep that you're spending a ton of money on expensive softwares, stuff that you someday might not even need personally because you're, you've 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 hired someone to handle it or you've outsourced it to someone to handle it. Uh, I know one of my buddies, Eddie McCracken, he's been on several of the podcasts here. Uh, he went through a situation as well where he's trying to find a VA to manage um, – the QuickBooks that we were having for our, our rental property portfolio that we own together. And it was a pain in the butt because everybody has a different learning curve. People have taken different classes. A lot of people do it a different way. Let's put it this way. If you can keep track of everything on a simple piece of paper or input it into a simple spreadsheet that you can understand, very easy to take that information and forward it over to an accountant or a bookkeeper and say, here's what it is. Here's the expenses. Here's the income for 2017 or 2018. So keep that in mind. I think that might make sense to a lot of people. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. And that's another podcast from the Investor Empowerment Series radio show. This is Joe Mueller signing off. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, Rate me on iTunes, Twitter, Stitcher, uh, YouTube, iHeartRadio, which just filed bankruptcy, I saw, by the way. But hopefully the podcasting keeps going. Um, If you have any questions for me, Joe at TannisGroupLLC.com. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Investor Empowerment Series radio show. Be sure to tune in next week for another empowering episode. We welcome your feedback, so please rate us on iTunes and Stitcher and visit us at www.InvestorEmpowermentChicago.com or TannisGroupRealty.com. 